Are you interested in introducing your students to the importance of strategic management and customer service in the context of an entrepreneurial venture? If so, then this is your day to be inspired. Over the next few minutes, we're going to walk through Inspire Lesson 5, Sam Walton, Disrupting an Industry. Through this lesson, your students will discuss the value of customer service in establishing long-term relationships with customers, differentiate between centralized and decentralized management structures, and identify the key individuals within a simple business supply chain. I'm James Wilcox, and this is Inspire, an entrepreneurship education series powered by Economics Arkansas. For Sam Walton, the status quo represented an opportunity to be different and to make a difference. He was a rule breaker, replacing the standard retail policies with greater efficiency and rewarding the customer with the savings. The ripples of his vision, beginning with a single discount store in Arkansas, now provide employment to more than 2 million people worldwide. Using Sam Walton's story as a backdrop, this lesson focuses on a few key concepts, namely customer service, logistics, management, and supply chain. Every Inspire lesson offers a modular approach to the content, allowing you to scaffold and take a deeper dive into the key concepts as time and interest allow. For lesson five, the time required ranges from 15 minutes for the bell ringer to 35 minutes for the full lesson and extension activity. All necessary materials are provided, including visuals, activities, student handouts, links to online resources, and a detailed list of instructions. Before class begins, print individual copies of Handout 1, Video Questions, and Handout 3, The Boss. Print team copies of Handout 2, Java's Journey. Print and cut out one set of company labels from Activity 1A, Centralized versus Decentralized, and post these labels on opposite walls in your classroom. Print and cut out enough management roll cards from Activity 1B, Centralized versus Decentralized roles, so that each student has one roll card. And finally, print and cut out enough management scenarios from Activity 1C, centralized versus decentralized scenarios so that each student has six scenarios. To set the stage for this lesson, show the short three-minute video Sam Walton disrupting an industry found at thisiscapitalism.com. Once the video ends, divide the classroom in half and point out the labels on the two opposite walls. One half of the room will be designated as centralized companies and the other half as decentralized. Have each student draw one management roll card from Activity 1B. Both sides of the room should have just one corporate headquarters card mixed in. All other students should receive a local manager card. Distribute the management scenarios from Activity 1C so that every student receives six scenarios, and it's okay if they receive duplicate scenarios. Distribute a copy of Handout 1 video questions to each student have students individually complete the questions and explain that the local managers should stay seated in their chairs until they need to visit one of their corporate headquarters for a solution. Local managers within centralized companies will have to ask headquarters for approval on anything, and headquarters will have to handwrite their final management decision on the local manager's form on handout one. Local managers within decentralized companies will need to first identify who should address each of their scenarios, themselves or headquarters. Allow students 10 minutes to complete, with the expectation that some of them won't be done when time runs out. The last question provides a great opportunity to debrief your students. What positives and negatives did you see in both centralized and decentralized management? Answers will vary, but may include comments on specific positives like the ability to make decisions more quickly, make better decisions, take advantage of local knowledge, react to local demand or disasters, or support local relationships. 
Comments may also include specific negatives, like a lack of corporate consistency, less accountability, risk of bad local managers, or perhaps a lack of local management's experience dealing with big issues. As time allows, offer students the opportunity to discuss their results. If you're just doing the bell ringer, you're done. But let's see how the mini lesson and extension continues to add value through a deeper dive. For the next portion of this lesson, ask students to work in teams of three to four. Using Visual One definitions, review each definition. Explain that teams will explore the logistics and global supply chain for a simple business. Distribute a copy of Handout 2, Java's Journey, to each team. Visit the website worldatlas.com and show students how to search for the top producers of various commodities. Use Cocoa as an example and type top cocoa producing countries in the custom search at the top right. Scroll down and select the link. Allow teams 10 minutes to complete. By reducing the number of links in his supply chain, Sam Walton was able to share his cost savings with his customers. A supply chain can be described as the combination of steps it takes to move a product or service from a supplier to the customer. Assume for a few minutes that you are opening a small coffee shop. Go to worldatlas.com to trace a few of your ingredients back to their producers and get a glimpse into the complex supply chain behind even simple products. After 10 minutes, allow a few teams to share the results they wrote for Handout 2, Java's Journey. Answers will vary, but may include ideas on buying coffee beans in bulk or straight from farmers or co-ops. Students may even suggest vertical integration by purchasing a coffee, sugar, or dairy farm to reduce the cost of buying these ingredients from someone else. Finally, Lesson 5 concludes with an optional extension activity on Handout 3, The Boss. This can be completed in class or as a homework assignment. According to Sam Walton, there is only one boss, the customer and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down simply by spending his money somewhere else. Sam Walton fully understood this principle. His appetite for business was not just about making another sale. His core desire was to serve the underserved and to ultimately give people more for less so they could afford a better life. This is the spirit of customer service defined as creating valuable experiences for customers before, during, and after their purchase. What are a few stores that you love to visit and shop at because of their great customer service? Provide a few specific examples of how they keep you coming back. Would you describe their approach to customer service as centralized? Or is every employee empowered to meet customer needs. This activity focuses on identifying the impact that decentralization has on customer service. When a business chooses to decentralize these efforts, every employee is given the duty and the authority to create valuable experiences for their customers. Please let us know how this lesson has helped your students explore innovative strategies in logistics and customer service that can play a critical role in their own entrepreneurial ventures. Thank you so much for watching Inspire, powered by Economics Arkansas. And thank you to Stevens Inc. and their generous support for making this resource possible. For more Inspire lessons or to discover other classroom tools and professional development opportunities, visit economicsarkansas.org.